Okay, now another interesting thing about this one is these two little tabs here are where our power switch are going to come in from. So when we bring in our power from here, we'll connect a ground on one of the transformer nuts. We will take the power up and over into the, say, the bottom side of here. We'll just kind of run along the bottom and then over, connect it to here. And the output of that will then go in and connect into the um, uh, other side of the transformer, basically, so that we have a switch between the main input 120 volts and the transformer. So, uh, and we actually have a picture of that, I believe, here. Or I can't. You'll, if you look in your <coughs> inside of the drawing, it shows the power transformer hookup, and it shows an on-off switch, and then the fuse. Uh, and then it connects to the, the main power cord. So you take the power cord into the fuse, from the fuse over to the on-off switch, and then from the on-off switch back to the other side of the power transformer. There'll be two black leads of the power transformer. The other end of that black lead connects to the white side, and there's no switch between the white side. So if we look, um, the I will show that right here. We have green is earth. That will be the one that we're going to put a little end on and connect to the transformer chassis. Black will come in and connect to the fuse. The fuse will connect to the switch. The switch will connect back over to um, one of these black wires to the power transformer. The white will then just connect to the other black wire for the transformer. This is the primary side. Secondary stuff is all the stuff over here. This is the transformer converts 120 volts from here to, this is the heater, so that's 6.3 volts. This is the five volts for the rectifier tube. And then this is the main power side, which will be, I'm not sure off the top of my head, I think it's probably 280 or something along that volts, but we could double check that. So that will be the next thing we're going to be wiring here shortly, but this is cooled off now. So go ahead and disconnect that, trim off the excess lead that's kind of sticking out there. Next, we need to Let's go ahead and wire up the... When do we put the board in? The board goes in pretty much the very last. We have to wire everything in here first. Okay. Then we drop the board in. Oh, I know what we want to do. We want to connect this ground to this wire first. So we're going to connect that ground wire. Well, first I would route this wire down carefully so these resistors don't end up touching anything that they shouldn't. And run it underneath here. And then we'll bring it up and we'll connect it to the right input pin. So for the, the way the schematic shows this being connected is it says pin two is where this input connects to. So if we look at the gap here, this is pin one and this is pin two. Okay. So this is going to connect in like that and then we'll solder it inside of that pin. Once that's done, then you'll want to kind of carefully wrap this around and down and underneath. And connect this to something as well. Right? Yeah, we'll connect the ground after I think because we probably want to wrap that more carefully. So, right. so this connects to pin two. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that now. Yep, let's do that right now. Alright. No, I actually changed my mind. We want to connect the heater wires before we connect that in. Okay. So the heater wires, I usually do a white and a green. And um, we'll connect those from here. Um, and we're going to come, um, I think I'm going to try it the typical fender way, which is actually you come up and then over and down instead of what I've sometimes done, which is to run them along this lip because I want to try out that typical fender way. So you would, What's the difference? Um, they both work. They're just a little different way of doing it. I've not done the fender way before. I've always done it where I kind of instead run it along the ledge and behind. Doesn't it look cleaner that way or does it the way it looks? I don't know what the definition of clean is. If you want to try and do it the well, way I've been doing that, it. If we have a wire sticking out here, is it going to make it harder to put the board in? I don't know. This is a very tight chassis, so that's a possibility, yes. So then let's do it this way. So the first thing I found was a neat trick with the uh, with these preamp sockets. I always have had problems trying to wire the four and five through mm -hmm. while wiring in the heaters. Somebody uh, from the forums told me a nice trick, which is to wire it ahead of time, soldering it carefully not to close off the holes so you can put one in, but it keeps it in place so that you don't have to fight it. So we're going to get a small amount of wire, and we're going to... Is this the thin wire? The yes, the very thin, the smallest wire gauge that I have. Mm -hmm. We're going to cut it. We're going to strip it back a bit, and, you, and, and then the nice thing is, is you've got plenty, you can have plenty of this to do it. So you'll want, uh, the way I, the wiring for a 12x7, the heaters are 4, 5, and 9. Mm -hmm. 
So um, what's one, two, three? So what you do is four and five need to be jumper together. You carefully. I'm not sure where we might have lost things there. It, battery died. Um, so what we've done, she's soldered this in here now, and it's correctly connected. We're going to first solder the do the heater wires now because I remember the heater wires are the kind of most tedious part to do if you have things in your way. Um, so she's right now jumpering. Uh, there's a trick I found on the forums uh, that if you jumper pins four and five ahead of time before trying to get everything in the way, that's the easiest way of not fighting it once you do it. Now, I even heard it's even easier to keep it outside of the chassis before you do this, but it's already done. So she's going to solder in on pin five right now hard. We'll leave that wire there for now, and then we're going to wire in all the rest of the, the um, heater wires. And then once she's got that other heater wire connected onto pin four here, we'll clip it and pull it away. Now, the other thing I'll do, she's going to go ahead and solder that now. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to get all, all pull together a length of uh, green and white wire. I use those for my heater wires always. And we're not going to need a super long piece here, but we wind it up tight, so we'll cut it up that much. I'm going to prep it by doing something else. So you can go ahead and solder that. I, you want to twist your heater wires as tightly as possible. So the way I do that is I put it inside of a drill and we crank down on it. Now don't worry about moving that, I'm just going to show it once I get it tightened up. I'm tightening a drill down on the wire directly. No I'm not, it's flying out. So what you do is you have one person hold on the other end and you start winding it on a drill. As about as tight as it can get and still hold it. Because what that does is now creates a, a hum rejection. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to split kind of apart on these ends and you're going to strip the ends and we're going to connect it to pin 9 and to this other pin. But you want the pin 9 part to kind of wrap around the outside carefully. Well, actually, now from what I've heard, it even is sometimes best to just run it through the middle like this. So you can see. So you, you're going to connect it to pin four right there. Talking about She's now connecting in the grid into pin two, or connecting the wire into the grid pin two for the first half of the triode. And she's going to solder that in. See, I'm blocking my own light. Mm -hmm. Yes, that looks very good. Alright, so now what we want to do is you're going to want to. Okay, I'm just going to the side of the way. You're just not going to sit in the Okay. No. Alright, so now what you want to do, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter which one we choose, but part of the reason we have different colors is um, if you get the wires out of phase with each other from tube to tube, it can cause some noise problems. Okay. So what you want to do is. We're going to pick um, nine and like say seven and seven across the board on these other, or on this other two. Actually, this is not going to need it. So you're just wiring heaters for two tubes. Okay. And then we'll run a, a wire from there over to where the um, light bulb is going to be because that's where the um, the bulb gets heat or light from the heaters as well. We won't solder those in because then we're going to go in and take this guy, these green wires, and connect those to that as well. Okay. So, um, so we'll basically, you're going to, we're going to start here. You're going to solder this into pin nine mm -hmm. across there. Okay. Then we'll, um, connect this other one to pin, uh, to this pin, uh, what is that four, I guess. So you have to connect those two in a way that makes sense, but so that they still fit. Okay. And then, and then once those are good, we'll kind of lay them down carefully out of the way. So, so there are nine pins. So those are four and five right there. Mm -hmm. And then I'm nine, just, it's just I'm that very bottom one. Yep. Them. So you may want to just lean that with the weight of it down if it'll stay, and then you can solder that ninth pin in first. You don't want to bend the wire too much right now because you're going to have to push it up carefully and against this ledge and then slide it across and then down again. Just get it in there and get it soldered for now. There you go. That's balanced pretty well, I think. So just get your soldering right in there. Solder that ninth pin in, and then solder in that that four five pin, and then we'll cut away that extra piece of that red wire as well. Nice. 
great. Okay, so now just uh, yeah, if you let that cool actually. for just a second, then you can get this guy and bend that pin uh, five up into that same one that that red one's in. Okay. And then we'll solder that one in and we'll clip off the excess length of these. So as an FYI, what heaters are is heaters means it's actually heating a, 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 a filament inside the tube that is what makes it glow. That's why tubes glow. But all the heater does is creates electrons that can freely flow through the tube and that makes them kind of get knocked off of the cathode and float up and hit the anode. So there's some great videos out there on this stuff. I think that uh, one of the best series I've seen on basics of tube amplifiers is Uncle Doug's. I highly recommend you watch those. Also robrobinet.com has a lot of great written content on understanding how tube amps work. So if you do things better by reading versus watching videos then Rob Robinet stuff is great for that as well. Also the valvewizard.co.uk I think it is. Uh, has some really excellent stuff on understanding how tube amplifiers work. So that's the wrong pin. Oh, that's pin three. Is okay. Well, you know. It's okay. I've done that kind of stuff before. I'm glad I caught it before you soldered it because it's more frustrating undoing it when you've soldered it already than if you're just catching it before you solder it. I want pin four, is that right? Pin four and five, and you soldered in five already, so four should just be the one the red one comes out of already. And the reason we can solder that is so you can easily get both of these wires in it before you solder it, and then we can clip away the excess leads. And you're cold. Now I'm soldering both basically these two Yeah, wires. and you'll end up cutting away the excess of this, but you're soldering the white and that little bit of red in there. Like I said, right. normally we should have done this before we put this, the tube in, the socket in. You just jumper four and five together, and then you solder them. I gotta get Mallory off the hot tub. <laughs> Our 110-pound dog seems to think standing on the hot tub is a good idea. Thank you, Mallory, for not being on my legs. Is that looking good? Yeah, I think so. All right, cool. We'll basically know. If we get to the point where we turn it on and there's no glowing on that tube, we just get the heater set up right. All right, so let's go ahead, set that down, clip off clip off the wire itself fairly close, and then also clip off any ends of the wire that are extruding out of the, the uh, pins too far so that they would actually potentially touch something or cause arcing. So now what we want to do is just effectively bring this up. If you look, oh, sorry. All right, so then you want to line these guys up, mm -hmm. and it looks almost like we could twist this maybe a little more now that, I've, now that we're done, to kind of bind that together. Okay. All right, we're recording again. So, we're just now, she's cut the wires to start doing those. I just realized we need to get in the, the fuse, or not the fuse, the light socket. So, we just had to get a, So there's a little bulb that goes inside here with that little jewel to cover it, but we're leaving that out for now. Okay. All right, so. Now, so now what we're gonna do so everybody understands, she's got this cut, she's gonna have to arrange them so that they will fit into pins two and seven, but at the same time we have to get these guys as well into two and seven to come across and over and connect to this. We put those on, the, the cool thing about these is they have two holes in them, these, these lamp connections. So you put the bottom ones, you can put one, and then these other side here, we'll put the other ones. So we'll just cut this guy. This one has a yellow stripe one, which is the center tap. That will go to ground. If you do not have a center tap, you use two 100 ohm resistors to ground or a, what's called a humdinger pot. And the humdinger pot is a potentiometer that's about maybe 200 ohms that you can balance the hum perfectly. But with a center tap grounded, you shouldn't have any of that problem. So. I'm trying to make a humdinger joke, but I can't seem to, oh, my shoes are making noise. But. So these we will also twist as best we can, and then we will bring them over and connect them like that as well once we get these wires run. So she's going to finish running those wires though now. So go ahead. All right. So I think we decided we were going to do the green on two 
but we're doing the white on two. I think the one I was talking about mattered only for the preamp tubes. Okay. I think it doesn't matter as much for the power tubes as I'm thinking about it because they're on like completely different pins anyway and they don't have it. So here's a bit of history on this. These are what's called 12AX7s. That means they use 12 volts. This tube here is going to be a 66, which is the first number means it's going to use 6 volts. Right. This is a 6 volt system, but if you run them in what's called, uh, I think it's called series, for, or is it parallel? Anyway, it's one of those two. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it, it sends uh, 6 volts down each leg through the middle, of, but doubled up like that, it ends up being 12 volts okay. for the tube itself, effectively. So it supports either 12 volts, one on either end, or 6 volts split down the middle like this. And so. Two and pin seven, correct? Correct. So you need to strip those. Yep. It's going to be a lot harder because they're all bent. So I'll let you strip them. I have a hard time stripping wire when it's not all bent. I am on purpose. Okay. Trying to just get a, a good physical connection. Pin, is that it not going to hurt it if nope. you can it backwards? Nope. Some people will bend those pins all the way sideways. I've seen some interesting heater designs where people fold the pins down and then run the heaters sideways instead. And I'm soldering these now too? Yep, solder that one as well. Mm -hmm. Alright. So we can let that cool off for a minute and dry, harden. Whatever it is, it's not drying really, it's just cooling to a solid state. So, actually while we're waiting for that, one of the things I noticed that we still haven't finished is we've got the ground for this. Uh -huh. So we should probably solder that and then you can bring this up. Yes. So we're going to want this guy to kind of shift this way anyway, but we just want to bring this wire up and wrap it around and solder it to that wire as well. So it's just kind of finishing up the ground of the... Um, input wire that we created with that shield of input. Well, wait, before you do that, this is loose. And so the more you pressure you put on that, it'll bend and stuff. I want, I want you to solder that ground there. All right. So now you can trim those leads right here. Right. Well, actually, now you can bend that around the side of that. Well, now let's let this cool that joint and come back to this stuff. That's one of the things I didn't tend to try and do sometimes is just bounce back and forth between solder connections so I don't risk moving one too early and, and freezing it out or, uh, and creating that bad solder connection. Those are now out of the way. They're not going to move a whole lot. Okay. Then we can pull this guy across here. In fact, we could potentially you go like this. Do you want to solder that after we have the board in? Or is um, that not going to matter? No, it won't. The board's going to come down under here anyway. It'll kind of be able to come under it. Um, and we can, but effectively, we want it to go to about there. So. So I will strip those for you. All right. So which ones are we testing? So it, it doesn't matter other than that you just effectively, you know, put one on either side. Like that, basically. Right. Too much wire still? Uh, it is a little, uh, see these, th this stuff is okay. There's no noise going to happen near this. It's just we want it away from these two tubes. Mm -hmm. This is the most important one, but I think we're fine. Yeah. So. All right. So now I'm going to solder these two. Well, we don't, no, you could solder them, I but I, was, I would rather instead we get these guys in as well and then kind of you can okay. solder them both at the same time. So what I do, I, you could use the drill thing here as well. I've just never done that before because it's not as pertinent this close, but you still want to wind them together tightly. And then you want to... And I think we could put these on the back side. 
but you want to roughly you know, do a calculation of what you want to cut those. And don't cut them at my finger, but yeah, use that's fine. We'll just give them a little room so we can strip that back and... Here? Yep, that's fine. Alright. So you want to kind of, now that I those for you, go ahead and twist those tighter and put them in kind of from the back side of those top bigger holes. Of the different other holes? Yep, so that, 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 those are the heater wires that we'll connect in. We'll have to ground this one as well, but that's the center tab. a lot easier to solder these beforehand and then I got these in and then they popped out. Yeah, that's the part I don't like about that kind of drug. That's, but. Sometimes I've had that happen too. You have to actually kind of get the tip of the soldering iron down inside the hole for a second, and then the, it, the heat gets around, I don't know what it is, but sometimes around the outer edges, it'll heat half of it, not the other half, so it doesn't want to bond to the other half, but putting the tip down in the hole heats the whole piece of metal all the way across. So. Yes. Yeah. 